My lab works on chemical proteomics, which we believe is a powerful tool for exploring protein modification. I'm going to talk about a few of the aspects of this work from my lab. So chemical proteomics provides chemical tools to probe protein modification and protein function in living cells. And we see two sides to this type of technology. One side is used to explore protein post-translational modification, or PTM, where we take chemical analogues of those modifications and feed them to cells. We can use it also on tissues or even in whole organisms. And the idea is that then those analogues are transferred to their target proteins by the same transposes that would transfer the native modification. Alternatively, we can use enzyme probes. So on the flip side of this technology, we can use enzyme probes that will ligate directly to the active site of an enzyme irreversibly and also introduce tags into the target proteins. And with these tags in place, we can do what we call a chemoselective ligation reaction. So this is a reaction that's unaffected by all of the other components of the cell and reacts specifically only with the tag that's been introduced either through modification by a transferase or through ligation at the active site of an enzyme. And that gives us access to a large number of handles that otherwise would not be accepted by the machinery of the cell, allowing us to do things like imaging or identification and quantification by, for example, mass spectrometry. So this type of uh, technology has been applied to a lot of modifications, and a few of them are shown here. In our lab, we've applied it to S-prenylation, we've applied it to NNS acylation, O-cholesterolation, O-ampylation, and N-acetylation, and it can also be applied to a large number of other things, such as GPI anchors, bacterial lipoproteins, glycosylation. There's a whole range of different modifications that can be addressed using this type of metabolic tagging technology. So the way that this technology works in outline, I've shown the example here for something called meristillation, which is the transfer of uh, C14 fatty acid to certain target proteins. The way this experiment works is we take one of our analogues, in this case I've shown YNC12. This is a compound that has a triple bond at one end of the molecule, this, this shown in red, this triple bond, which just replaces the last single bond in meristic acid. Otherwise it's very much the same sort of molecule. We can feed it into cells. It gets activated and incorporated metabolically inside live cells, so it gets converted into a FOA thio ester, which is the active substrate for the enzyme, the n style transferase. Once that's been incorporated for a certain period of time, we can lyse the cells, recover the proteins that have picked up this alkyne, and the theory is that the alkyne, this chemical tag, will only end up on proteins that would otherwise be modified by NMT. We can then undertake this chemoselective ligation reaction. We typically use a reagent that has a chemical moiety, this N3 or azide moiety for cross-reacting with the alkyne under very specific conditions, and a dye, so in this case tamara, so we can see things by fluorescence, and also biotin to act as an affinity handle. We can then perform a pull-down on magnetic streptavidin beads, for example, and isolate the proteins that have been tagged, and therefore the proteins that were meristillated, or would be meristillated, and wash away all the things that we don't need for the analysis, and then we can analyse just the meristillated proteins by this methodology. This works very nicely. What I'm going to talk about here is a more advanced approach to this problem. We've worked a little bit on this protein called Sonic Hedgehog. This is a very important signaling protein that has essential roles in human development, mammalian development in general, and also in cell proliferation, and it tends to be dysregulated in a large number of cancers, promoting a proliferative phenotype. So this protein is rather special in that it carries two different modifications, one at each end of the protein. On the N-terminus, it picks up a palmitate motif linked through an amide on, on the N-terminal amine, which is transferred by an enzyme called hedgehog acyl transferase. On the C-terminus, it picks up a molecule called cholesterol, which is another type of lipid, which it picks up through an autocatalytic cholesterolation reaction. So part of the initial sonic hedgehog molecule actually catalyzes its own removal from the protein whilst using cholesterol as a substrate. So it's a type of protease, but instead of using water to hydrolyze an amide bond, it uses cholesterol to form a new ester bond at the C-terminus. So this type of modification is essentially unique across nature, unique to the hedgehog proteins, and we were interested in having tools to, available to study these modifications in more detail. So what can we do with chemical proteomics with sonic hedgehog? Well, we can tag both the cholesterolation and the palmitylation, but using tags that have different chemistries. So we can look at both of them individually or together in the, in the same cell on the same molecule. So what I've shown here is in the top right an azide tagged cholesterol analog which we feed into cells that are over, stably overexpressing he sonic hedgehog protein so these are HEC293 cells and on the top left I've shown an alkyne derived palmitate analog which we can also feed into cells at the same time. So when we have both of these analogs being fed into cells that are overexpressing sonic hedgehog, the idea is that they will both be incorporated into the target protein, much as cholesterol and palmitate would be. We can then ligate these to two different colours of fluorophores using complementary chemistry. The one shown in red addresses the cholesterol motif, so this alkyne with a red fluorophore on, and the azide, the blue one with a green fluorophore on. 
addresses the palmitate motif. And you can see schematically down the left exactly how this is working. We end up with an azide derived cholesterol on the C-terminus and alkyne derived palmitate on the N-terminus of the protein. And these can be modified in different colors using this type of selective ligation chemistry. And on the right, I've shown how we can use that to detect sonic cholesterolation inside cancer cell lines that overexpress sonic hedgehog. So it's useful for actual detection of cholesterolation in those cells, but also multiplex detection in the bottom right, where we've clicked with these two different colors of fluorophore. On the one hand, Tamara is showing us the cholesterol modification, whereas fluorescein is showing us the palmitate modification, and we can show the overlay in the same cells, we can modify the protein with both of these tags, and look at the interplay then between these two types of modification. So that's just an example of the way in which we could use these tools to understand rather complex biological and biochemical mechanisms inside living cells. The view of our lab, at least, and, and many others around the world, that chemistry and protein modification are really a natural match because PTMs are the complex and dynamic chemical phenomena, and they're really outside the direct control of genetics. It's hard to manipulate and understand post-translational modification using solely genetics. So therefore, we think it's well matched to an approach that incorporates some chemistry, and this proteome-wide study, essentially, of PTMs and protein function can really be enhanced by applying an understanding of how the chemistry works, of how the biochemistry works, the ability to make new probes by synthetic chemistry. And in combination with enzymology and cell biology, it can provide some really powerful tools for drug discovery and also ultimately systems biology, so modeling how these modifications evolve in responses to disease, in responses to drug treatment and this type of thing.